Welcome to Blender for Blogs. I'm Justin, and this is a video editing series on how I use Blender to edit videos for my blog. If you're tuning in for the first time, uh, check out this promo video that I did right here that you see, uh, showing everything that we will be covering. Links to it will be on the screen or in the description. For those of you who are returning, welcome back. I hope you've enjoyed the videos so far. Uh, there have been pretty good comments already, so it seems like you have. Always feel free to let me know what you think, especially if something is confusing or unclear. I'm definitely here to help, and I'm always open to hearing advice on how I may, might be able to improve these tutorials. Okay, having said that, what I want to show you in this video are some extra settings in Blender that I haven't mentioned yet, uh, but that are definitely worth pointing out. So if you go to File, User Preferences, and go to the Editing tab, you see this Transform Release Confirms button or checkbox. Um, now I have that checked and what that does is basically if I zoom in here I just do shift B for zoom for my box zoom and uh, it just makes the uh, click and drag act like normal so click drag click drag click drag. Um, now if I have if I don't check this and I come back here I have to do an extra click to drop it. So click, drag, but if I release my mouse button, it's still attached to it and it still moves with it. So I have to click in order to drop it or to confirm that that's where I want that to be. So click, drag, click, click, drag, click. And this gets really annoying really quickly, especially if you're used to pretty much every single other program uh, that just, you know, release drops it. So that's why I check that. So release confirms uh, the position you want it to be, or in, in other words, the release drops drops it. So if you release your mouse button, it'll drop it. Um, so yeah, so now I can just move this like normal. All right, I wanna put these back here. So I'm gonna put my cursor here, page up with this selected, shift S to snap that there. Same thing here, put my cursor here, page up so that it aligns with the beginning of this strip, select this strip, shift S to line that back up. Okay, the next thing that I want to show is that if you are, uh, this I did shift left arrow there, by the way, to go to the start frame. You can also um, just hit this button here, jump to first or last frame, right there. Um, shift A to add in a movie. And I'm just gonna choose one of my movies grab on the Y and go up, zoom out. Okay, so they're pretty much matched up here, but um, let's say I have a frame rate of 30. You can see, let's say you import your movie and this is what you get. Uh, your audio is longer or shorter than your video. And this is just, again, because of the frame rate that you have set. Um, so I just wanted to point that out, that this can happen, and if this does happen, basically you just have to change this to match. And you can do that by just kind of experimenting with this, it's like, oh, nope, that makes it go higher, uh, 25, it makes it go, okay, that's closer, so, you know, want to keep going to here. You can also just check to see what your original movie, um, had, so like this one is 23 frames per second, so you just check the original file and match it up here. So I just want to make sure you're aware of that. So the next thing are proxies. Now, if you've noticed that um, I actually have been using this 25% here. Um, so if I make this 100%, it blows it up to 100% here. Um, but I've been doing 25% because just to make the, the frames per second faster so that it makes the editing faster. It was pointed out in one of the comments though that in one of my videos it didn't actually speed up the frames per second. Well, so you can like see the, the frames per second up here. Yeah, I'm gonna mute that just by pressing H. That's the audio right there. So I'm gonna play that. And it here's your frames per second up here in the corner. Um, now, they were saying it didn't speed it up, which at the time they're right, it didn't. But that could be due to several things. Like, first of all, I was recording my screen for this this tutorial, but I was also rendering another video at the time as I was editing, which I don't recommend. But you know, I was trying to save some time. 
Um, but that's why my frames per second was still low. This usually works. Um, sometimes it doesn't, again, if my computer is crunching. But there are there is another way to, to do that. And if you hit the in for, to bring up your properties panel here, and let's uh, drag this out just a little bit. Um, if you go down to, where is it here? I'll close all of these. Oh yeah, I have to select my video strip here. Okay, and uh, window proxy time code here. If I check that, then um, I can have the option to make a proxy uh, to where I can keep this at 100% up here and then render out a, a proxy to use at 25% so that speeds up my editing. Now, the reason I don't use this is because, um, a couple of reasons. One, I'm not really too familiar with how it all works, but I do know that if I use the 25% proxy, it will actually render out an entirely separate video at 25%. Um, and you can change per project or per strip here, but if you do it per strip, it's gonna change every single one of these strips into a separate video file um, Where's the, where's the one I have that uh, that have 20, tw has 25% here. And first of all, that just takes way too much time, but it also takes up more space on my computer, which I don't need. Um, so that's why I just do it up here because usually this works. But strangely enough, I just, as I was trying to record this tutorial, found out that um, if, I, if I don't check that, the proxy time code here, and I go to uh, the view settings, which by the way, it's either, you if you don't see this, it's probably because you're only using the um, the sequencer and not the preview. So it needs to be in the preview window here, this view settings or in the dual view here. So view settings, uh, render size 25%. Now that blows it up. Um, but you can see it's actually at 25% quality. So if I make this 100% here, you see the quality hasn't changed. It's still 25% quality, but it's 100% here. And this is the way proxies are supposed to work. The problem is I actually haven't made a proxy for this video. We just added this video in and I haven't, I just checked proxy time code, but I haven't actually uh, rebuilt, rebuilt those codes. Um, and uh, I don't even have it checked right now. So you got 25% and you can see that here. Now if I go back to uh, no proxy full render, then you can see it's a lot more clear. Um, so 25%. So I have no idea why that it's working without me actually uh, using the proxy, but you know, whatever. I don't know if it's gonna work on any of the other ones. Um, I'm gonna delete this here and just check this out see if this were yeah see it's i haven't done this for any of these here so um if you notice here i have any there's not even the options so you know maybe i'll just use that the view settings proxy size 25 percent you know i don't even have to render that out so yeah, we'll see how that goes Okay, so the last thing that I want to point out in this video are the Kino Raw tools. And in order to do this, I actually have to open up a separate uh, instance of Blender just because it was causing it to crash when I checked it in the options here. But if you go to User Preferences, the Add-ons tab, and type in Kino, you see this Kino Raw, Kino Raw tools pops up. Check that, and if you do the drop-down here, you can see there's a whole bunch of different... Um, settings are extra settings for the video sequence editor and what this does is just it really boosts the functionality of the video sequence editor so for example from what i hear um, in the kino raw tools when you're in the image sequencer um, actually let's just go back to our option here so if i had text here i could click and drag in the viewer here and drag that text around or drag a picture around and stuff like that, which you cannot do actually with the Blender's bare bones video sequence editor. But if you want to mess around with those, uh, by all means go for it and uh, it probably speed up your uh, video editing workflow. Um, but since I haven't messed with it yet, I don't know how. So I'm just going to show you what I know and how I've been editing my videos so far. So um, that is the last thing. <clears throat> So, close that, 
close that and close that. Okay, so that is it. Um, I'm. This is where we're going to start off with our uh, next video on strip mechanics. I'm going to show you the properties of the strips and how they behave when they're cut and things like that in the next video. So I will see you over there.